Generating an accurate 90 degree phase shift across a broad range of uh, audio frequencies is a key part of any software defined radio. I've been using the Iowa Hills software, which you can see right here, in particular the Hilbert Filter Designer, to do that for some time. And this was based on a great Charlie Morris video, which uh, I'll include a link to below. I had an email from someone, though, of a little while back, letting me know that the Iowa Hills site had unfortunately gone uh, offline. Um, and I'd been lo uh, looking myself uh, for an alternative to the Iowa Hills uh, software, not because there's anything wrong with it, but uh, because uh, if you want to run it on Linux, you have to install Wine, and uh, yeah, installing Wine's a bit of a pain. Plus, also, I'd, I'd like to have an, an, a different source and you know understand the internals a little better. Okay, so here's the approach here, and um, what Charlie did in in his example is basically he created two Hilbert filters. Uh, one with a plus 45 degrees phase offset, the other one with a minus 45 degrees phase offset, the result of which is there is a total of a 90 degree phase offset from the output of these two filters. Now that's one of the important things to understand about these Hilbert filters is they don't produce a 90 degree phase offset in themselves, they produce a phase off offset with respect to uh, a another similarly configured Hil Hilbert filter or alternatively a delay line. So what I've got in this example is not plus and minus 45 degrees, but a standard Hilbert filter and a delay line uh, configured with the same number of taps as the Hilbert filter, and that delay line has a one in the midpoint. Uh, and that's one of the uh, things about these filters is they do require an odd number of taps. So let's move now over to the Python code uh, and uh, I'll walk through that. So I'd stumbled across a uh, YouTube video the other day uh, where a gentleman was, uh, which I'll include a link to, was describing the, uh, the approach to uh, creating the Hilbert and the delay line uh, using MATLAB. Um, now I don't have uh, MATLAB, but I do have Python. And uh, there's a lot of equivalence between the libraries that are, exist in MATLAB and Python. Uh, now one of the things, uh, the gentleman was using a function in MATLAB called FURPM, which is the Parks McClellan function for generating the taps. Um, uh, SciPy doesn't have that, but it does have an equivalent function, and you can see it right here. This signal.remas function right here, which basically produces the uh, the Hilbert filter. Okay, so let's just go through the code at a high level and uh, see the component parts. So I basically got uh, two functions in here. We've got generate Hilbert. Uh, and that takes uh, the number of taps that you want to do, which must be an odd number, uh, incidentally. Uh, it takes the sample rate in hertz. It takes the band, which is basically the, uh, the, the Hilbert uh, filter produces a, a, a bandpass filter. Uh, so these are, this is the range of, of frequencies in that, uh, in that uh, uh, filter. Transition width is the uh, width in hertz between the corner frequency of the pass band and the stop band. And then finally, window function is a window function that you apply to the, uh, uh, to the taps once they're generated. Uh, and the function I'm using in the example below is Kaiser, but obviously there's, a, there's a, a wide variety of other functions that you can use. The second function of interest here is this generate Hilbert header. And what this basically does is you give it uh, the result uh, of the previous function, which is the delay line and the taps produced as well as num, num taps, uh, sample rate, and band, and it generates a header file that has the, uh, that has the, uh, C, the coefficients uh, in C uh, so that you can sort of just plug them straight into your program. Then I've got an exam a couple of examples down below here of, uh, of running this. Um, and so let's now uh, move on to running those examples and uh, we'll see the output. Okay, so this simple example I've got here, uh, just walking through the, the parameters, uh, the sample rate is 44.1 kilohertz. Uh, the band uh, pass filter is configured from 200 hertz to 9 kilohertz. Uh, the transition width is, 100, uh, width is 190 hertz. Number of taps I'm going to generate is 361. And then the windowing function of you, I'm using is a Kaiser with a, a beta of 8. So let's just go through and generate those taps. And they're, they're generated, and you can have a look over on the variable explorer over here, the uh, actual taps that, that are generated. So if 
we have a look here, here's all the taps that, that that's generated. Um, so let, let's have a look at the uh, the actual taps themselves. Um, so what we can use is this uh, FREQZ function, which uh, shows the frequency response of the uh, of the filter of the Hilbert filter generator, not the delay line. So let's uh, have a look at that. And there you can see it there. So there's that band pass filter. It's got a nice steep uh, roll off, and then you've got uh, uh, this is the 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 uh, stop band right down here. What we can also do is run some samples through this. So what I've done is I've created a simple sine wave of frequency 2300 hertz. And then I'm running the output of that, uh, convolving it with both the taps and the delay. Let's have a look at that. So now I've got uh, basically two uh, outputs. Uh, one for the Hilbert and one for the delay, and we can plot those two together. So let's do that. And uh, I'm going to have to drill in a bit because uh, there's a lot going on there. But what you'll see when I drill in, it is that it, it's actually generated the uh, the output, and you can see it's clearly in 90 degrees uh, 90 degrees phase offset. Just to confirm that a little bit further, we can do a scatter plot of the output here, and, uh, of, of the uh, output and the uh, delay line, and we should see a perfect circle. Uh, because uh, it doesn't look like a perfect circle there because it's, uh, it's rectangular. But you can see here that uh, here's the output of that, uh, and that circle, just as it indicates on the uh, oscilloscope, we have a uh, 90 degree phase shift between the Hilbert and the delay line. So what we'll do now, I mean, all of, the, all of this is theory, of course. So what I'll do, do now is I'll generate, uh, uh, I'll use this generated uh, um, uh, Hilbert uh, filter and the delay line. I'll plug it into uh, one of my example uh, uh, that I've used before on the ESP32, and we'll see the output on the oscilloscope. Okay, so here's the code uh, from my ESP32-IQ uh, project, and I'll include a link to this uh, to the repo that this is on. Uh, so here's the generated uh, uh, coefficients here from the Python program. Let's just go over to that. So you can see here it's generated an array of, uh, of taps here. Uh, happens to be of, of length 361. And here's the delay line, also of length 361. You can see on the delay line right in the middle, if we can uh, find it there, there it is. Uh, there's, that, uh, there's that single center tap, which is set to one. So let's uh, flash this over to the board. Um, we'll go ahead and do that right now. Uh, bear with me. It's going to take a little while to, uh, to get started here. Uh, anyway, wh what I'll do is I'll uh, flash this to the board and then we'll have a look at the output on the oscilloscope. Okay, so that's flashed to the board now. Let's uh, have a look at the uh, output on the oscilloscope. Um, as you can see, well, you, you can't really see that well. Uh, but there's the output there. Um, that is at uh, 1.4 kilohertz for both the... Um, uh, for the for the input uh, there for on both channels, uh, let's just move that around a little bit. Let's go up to two kilohertz. You can see there. Increase the uh, time base. We, we've still got that uh, nice ninety degree phase offset at uh, two kilohertz. Go up to three kilohertz. Um, and the uh, obviously the, the the right test is to uh, graph that in XY mode and see the output. So let me just change the frequency. Uh, obviously, one of the, the, the key characteristics of this is that you, you get that solid 90 degree phase offset across a broad range of frequencies. So let me go from 1.4 uh, kilohertz to 2.4 kilohertz, 3.4 kilohertz, 4 kilohertz, 6, 7, 8. Now it'll start to deteriorate around 8 because I had that uh, band pass filter configured for 9 kilohertz. And you can see there at nine kilohertz, it's uh, it's it's completely done. So anyway, uh, I thought this would be of interest. Um, I like I said, I've been looking for an alternative to Iowa Hills for some time, and uh, uh, kind of the, the site going away uh, prompted me to sort of do, do some digging. Uh, I'll provide a link to the Python code and the this ESP32IQ example here, and. Uh, 
uh, if you have any questions or, or, or alternatively, if you have any corrections uh, to this approach, I'd, I'd love to hear about it. But anyway, that's all for now. Hope you enjoyed this.